have to go. Mere dil, mere musafir, my heart, my fellow traveler, who aperse hukum sade, that has been legally decreed again, kivaten bader ho hantum, that you and I become countryless, dingali gali sadai, so we can go out calling in streets, Kare Ruch Nagar Nagarka, head out to new alien lands. Kisurak koi bai, so that we may find a clue. Kisiyare nama barka, a messenger from the beloved. Hare Kajnabi se puche, ask every other stranger. Jopadatha apne karka. Address to what used to be our home. Sarikue na shanaya in this land of no acquaintances. Hamedin se raat karna. We turn days into nights. Kabi isse baat karna. Sometimes talk to this person. Kabi usse baat karna. Sometimes consult with that person. To make kya kahun ki kya hai? What should I tell you? What it is? Shabe hamburi balaya. The night of sorrow is a cursed demon. This too would have sufficed for us. Had someone been keeping count? We wouldn't have minded dying. Had it only been once. Mere Musafir, my heart, my fellow traveler. Who aperse hukum sadir? It has been legally decreed again.
Hello, I'm Bill Holston. It's my privilege to be the executive director here at the Human Rights Initiative of North Texas, where I've served for the previous eight years. Um, I'd like to, the very first thing I'd like to do is to thank Miriam Begg for the many, many hours she's put in to making this a really memorable evening for all of us to enjoy as we celebrate our 20th anniversary uh, together. I'm sorry we can't do that in person, but if we've learned anything in the previous uh, six months, it's been that we should all be flexible and to adapt. And I think you'll find that this particular adaptation from the past uh, events is going to be delightful, and I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. I want to take a moment to recognize all the first responders and the social workers continue to put their health at risk and lives on line to keep life going for all the rest of us. Many of our clients are healthcare workers and essential workers, and we send them our prof uh, profound gratitude and um, respect. Um, we stand here on land which was taken from the original inhabitants, the Caddo and Wichita and other uh, nations. And here we say unequivocally and unapologetically that Black lives matter and that we stand with Black, Indigenous, people of color, and LGBTQ individuals and reject white supremacy and all of the and all other forms of oppression that continue to uh, oppress people uh, in so many different ways. Uh, we are also committed as an organization to becoming a more equitable organization, uh, confronting, uh, reviewing our own policies and procedures, as well as individual staff members and board members that we would all move from being not simply not racist, but to be anti-racist. Um, HRI has courageously faced the challenges of COVID. We've been working as remotely and as safely as possible. However, the government continues to generate notices on our cases, which we must respond to. In addition, we've worked very hard at adapting our processes to accept new clients and also to expand our services. And of course, because our clients have been hard hit by COVID, we have our social service department has done an awesome job of meeting their uh, social service needs. And in partnership with foundations of the city of Dallas, we've been able to provide rental assistance uh, and emergency uh, food aid, as well as uh, toiletries, which many of you have conducted toiletry drives for, uh, for our clients. And for that, we're really uh, grateful. Our clients are resourceful, hardworking people. They've been hard hit and we're standing with them and you're standing with them alongside us. Mostly I want to say that all of that is possible because of you, our supporters, and we thank you with great, with gratitude. And we want to say, I hope you enjoy this evening of creativity and celebration. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to join us tonight. I'm Jenny Wheel, HRI's Director of Development, and I'm here to tell you just a little bit about our programs and services and the HRI community. For 20 years, HRI has provided free legal and social services for immigrant survivors of human rights abuses. Of course, our community begins with our clients. Last year, we served 612 clients. They were children as well as adults from all walks of life in 47 countries. They speak Spanish and French, and Hark and Arabic, Mandarin, Aroma, other languages, and each of them has their own unique story to tell. 
What they have in common is that they had the courage and resourcefulness and simple good fortune to escape abusive environments. We know them to be remarkable people. But of course, they're also ordinary people who've had to survive extraordinary circumstances. Our commitment to them is to provide culturally competent, trauma-informed services that move them from persecution and risk to freedom and opportunity, stability and safety here in the United States. And because freedom and opportunity begin with legal status and the right to work legally, our story begins with our legal services. We have three programs. We serve asylum seekers fleeing persecution, children who've been abandoned, abused, or neglected, and have no one to protect or provide for them in their home countries, and survivors of violence, eligible under the Violence Against Women Act or under a statute that encourages crime victims to participate in the investigation and prosecution of crime. Obviously, 612 clients is a lot for a small staff, and that's where our community expands to include you. Last year, more than 400 volunteers provided over 9,000 hours of service to help us keep our commitment to our clients. Many of them are pro bono attorneys who have been recruited, trained, supervised, and supported by our expert staff. Others work in social services or across all services as translators and interpreters, as country condition experts, mentors, and counselors. I want to say a word about our social services because that's an essential component of how our clients move from risk to stability. Through individual and group case management, referral, advocacy, uh, whether that's in navigating healthcare systems that aren't always open or friendly to uh, recently arrived immigrants or the undocumented or the educational system or even the DMV, we help clients move into a position of housing and food security, of medical health, and into a place where they can begin to achieve their personal goals. One of the reasons it's important to talk about our volunteers is that you are part of the way that we were able to pivot on short notice to address the pandemic. HRI has been providing unprecedented levels of aid since the very beginning. We have, in just the last few months, given out more than 600 bags of toiletries and groceries, cleaning supplies and, supplies and hygiene products. We couldn't do that without you. We've also been fortunate to be in a position to provide direct financial aid uh, for rental assistance and health care access. You know, most of our clients are not eligible for unemployment benefits. In fact, most of them pay more than $400 a year for the right to work legally. They aren't eligible, most of them, for Medicaid or Medicare. So being a conduit to uh, accessible services is a crucial part of a new beginning here in the United States. And that is the work of our social services department and volunteers. Our advocacy department uh, partners with clients to ensure that their perspectives and concerns are centered not just in HRI's work, but in the public discourse. So we help to advocate for issues of concern, to gather people so that they might form community and begin to imagine solutions to shared concerns. Also, uh, so that they can create the democratically run uh, uh, sub-organizations within HRI and within coalitions um, to address future issues that might arise. You can see it's a big community. You can see that there are many ways to uh, get involved. Tonight, we celebrate client stories through art and music, poetry, story, and song. We hope that you will feel a sense of connection, that these stories will inspire reflection on your own experiences of vulnerability and strength and the importance of community. If you find that you would like to become a part of the HRI community, we'd love to hear from you. There's always work to do and there is a place for you. 
So I look forward to talking with you. I hope you enjoy the evening, and I hope you'll join us in celebrating the richness of the immigrant experience and of immigrant stories, not just in their trauma, not just in their triumph over trauma, but also in the ambition, the dreams, and the contribution immigrants make to our larger community and to our country. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christina. I work at HRI in the asylum program as a Department of Justice accredited representative. I recently celebrated my eighth year anniversary at HRI this past September. One of my favorite parts about HRI is that it was founded by two extraordinary women who envisioned something better for immigrants and for their experiences through the US immigration system. This evening, I'm here to share a couple of stories with you all about one of these extraordinary women, Serena. These memories of her still resonate strongly with me today. I remember several years ago when HRI staff and board came together to discuss strategic planning for the organization. Both of our co-founders were there, Betsy and Serena. I vividly remember Serena saying, it was pleasing to see all the young dedicated women in the staff. I reflected on her words that day and shared it on my social media. And I looked it up so that I could share it with you all tonight. On July 10th, 2014, I wrote, when the founding mothers of the organization where you work agree that it's pleasing to see all the young dedicated women in the staff, then you know it's a good day and you are exactly where you need to be. I remember how I felt that day and how I deeply connected to Serena saying these words. That was Serena, thoughtful with her words. Another memory that I have of Serena is when she hosted a gathering for HRI staff at her home. That evening, she had a lot of yummy food and drinks, beer, wine, and it was an overall inviting atmosphere. She was as pleasant as always as she introduced us to her husband and her children. Some of us asked her if she could take us on a tour of her home and she graciously agreed. During the tour, the way she showed us every nook and cranny, telling us stories behind every room, it was apparent that everything in her home was there because she intentionally picked it out with much thought. That was Serena, deliberate, gentle, and with a calming presence. At the end of this evening, there was still a lot of yummy food left, so Serena opened up her cupboards and started to take out food storage containers and handed it to us. She encouraged us to take as much food as we wanted, so I packed up my container with a lot of the delicious food and brought it home with me that night. That was Serena, always giving, always thoughtful. I share these memories this evening with you all about Serena to honor her and to honor the organization she helped create. At HRI, we start our day and it's complicated. It's not easy and oftentimes it's heartbreaking, especially during these times when our clients seem to always be under fire. Still, it's a privilege to show up for work every day alongside my colleagues for this noble cause that Serena's gentle yet determined spirit helped create. I am honored that I met her and that I am here and that I am now a part of something worth fighting for. Thank you, Serena. When I die, 
Give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give to me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on your eyes and not on your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting souls touch souls, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away.
خانه دوست کجاست؟ در فلق بود که پرسید سوار آسمان مکسی کرد رهگذر شاخه نوری که به لب داشت به تاریکی شنها بخشید و به انگشت نشان داد سپیداری و گفت نرسیده به درخت کوچه باقی است که از خواب خدا سبزتر است و در آن عشق به اندازه پرهای صداقت آبی است میروی تا ته آن کوچه که از پشت بلوغ سر به در میارد پس به سمت گل تنهایی میپیچی دو قدم مانده به گل پای فواره جاوید اساتیر زمین میمانی و تو را ترسی شفاف فرا میگیرد در سمیمیت سیال فضا خشخشی می شود کودکی می بینی رفته از کاج بلند بالا جوجه بردارد از لانه نور و از اون می پرسی خانه دوست کجاست father's home there was a tree like yes th yeah. there is a tree uh, at his backyard there is a big tree so the other tree is a tree like this oh wow naturally it is like this it is just one tree but it it has long branches and long roots uh -huh. so the root goes up to one kilometer yeah. which is very strong it's evergreen it stays years uh -huh. there are trees like more than thousands of years of like this mm -hmm. yeah Like they, they want to know more about. Thank you. They want to know more about you. Uh -huh. I say I was. Yeah. Why are they asking? Why are they asking? But I say, well, they were trying to be friendly. It was yeah, me. Absolutely. Like it was. Yeah. You know. The problem is whenever I start talking about it, I get I get emotional and everything takes absolutely. me back. After talking, I had some just really quick ideas, but uh, everything seemed just very superficial after getting deeper into conversation and the, uh, his specific story. I wanted to be able to capture his kindness and the spirit and uh, also be able to hint at some of the struggles that he's had to come through and work with. Uh, he told me about his family in Ethiopia and uh, his experiences at the Human Rights Initiative and uh, what he's been dealing with over the past few years. I wanted to create a story that could suggest a Uh, this distant mirage that we all have in our minds that we, we think about things that we miss and uh, family that we love a broken collage that uh, uh, is, is memories of home I, I want this piece to uh, suggest his ancestors um, love and pride I want to be able to have all of these different beautiful things around him to build him up but at the same time I want to be able to feel the hands of his wife and his father weighing down on his shoulders. I want to be able to have uh, some real perspective. It's not always easy.
saffron. I flutter when I dance and shiver when I drive. My fingers create lotus, deer, and shiva. How far is Houston from Victoria City? Prayers of my palm, poetry in my eyes. The sky is so big, the roads are so wide, I don't melt here. My saffron, your orange. When I push cards and displace cans from the shelves, I ache, I stomp. My fingers create the rain and reach for the milk. When I'm not watched, I make art in Walmart. Homophily for Alan Kurdi. Soon enough, he too will remain a quiet picture. The clean sneakers, red shirt, and shorts on a sleeping toddler. As the tides run him over on the border of land and water, his eyes closed and nose squished on the shore's shelter. While we will hug our children tighter and wish their futures brighter, our conscience losing the anchor afloat and washing up lighter and lighter. ¿Te gustó la sesión de fotos? Me encantó. Sí, qué bueno. Sí. sí. La idea, la, sí, la idea de la de la fotografía era que tú resaltaras como una como una diosa, como una como una niña de estas que que vuelven a, a renacer y convertirse en algo este bello como de la de la mitología que te estaba contando de la de la niña de la de la perla, la perla de la luna, ¿verdad? Entonces, espero que te haya gustado. Me encantó. Sí, te, te veías fascinado. hermosa. Sí. Gracias. Sí, Scarlett. Cuéntame de tu infancia. Eh, la verdad fue muy... Pensaba que era feliz, pero no. Eh, viví, jugar era como... Era vivir. Era muy hermoso jugar. Cuando jugaba con mis hermanos, con mis amiguitos. Eh, y fue... Ya el tiempo se fue convirtiendo como, ya fui razonando cómo eran las cosas y ya fue muy horrible para mí. Ay, eso me da sí. muchísima pena. Muy ¿Y feo. En, en qué manera fue horrible para ti? En cómo fue allá, las pandillas, eh, cuando nos quemaron nuestra casa. Y, ¿Por qué quemaron tu casa? Eh, delincuencia que hay allá, ellos, mm. su vida es asesinar a la gente y todavía eso no acaba. Entonces ahora puedo ir a la escuela tranquila y antes era con miedo que antes iba a la escuela. Sí, pero sí extrañas estar más a mi madre sí, que a tu mamá. Allá. ¿Tu papá no, todavía vamos. vive? No, él murió. Uh -huh. Sí, nosotros nos criamos siempre solo, solo con mi mamá. Uh -huh. Sí. Sí. ¿Y cuántas hermanas son ustedes? ¿Cuántos Somos, eh, éramos cinco hermanas, pero ma eh, mi hermana murió, una hermana murió, la mataron, Ay, el ex esposo de ella, y entonces ya solo quedamos cuatro. ¿Qué significa para ti un hogar? ¿Qué significa el hogar o un hogar? Esa felicidad de estar en un hogar para ti. La verdad que cuando estaba pequeña no tenía un hogar así feliz. Y ahora que ya podemos estar todos juntos, mis hermanos, de cuando estábamos pequeños, de ahora pensamos diferente. Eh, nunca tuvimos a mi padre para que nos diera un abrazo. Y, es, y así ese amor que antes no tuvimos, ahora nos damos entre nosotros, el amor. Y ahora es muy bello, la verdad. Es muy hermoso. Y las personas que tengan un hogar, espero que lo valoren, porque es muy importante.
Es aquí con más seguridad, con más leyes. Con más leyes y no sé, me volví a renacer. Porque en un futuro voy a tener mi familia y me va a gustar que mi familia también viva lo que contarles lo que también pasé para que ellos piensen y valoren lo que lo que uno ha pasado y el día de mañana que yo tenga mis hijos eh, les voy a enseñar los valores y la cómo es la vida para uh -huh. que ellos valoren las cosas y que no todo también es material claro. sino que también unos buenos pensamientos Hi, my name is Marcella Evans. I've been a member of the HRI community for years as a volunteer, as a staff member, as an advocate, and as a donor. Um, human rights are the basic rights and freedoms belonging to every person, to all of us as a community. And we are all part of the same community. We rely on each other. We help each other. We learn together, and we learn from each other and from our collective experiences. HRI's work for the immigrant members of our community elevates the collective consciousness of all of us, both locally and in our country as a whole. HRI serves clients who overcome unimaginable challenges, and these clients go forth and impact our community as students, as teachers, as leaders, as humans, and volunteers. We take our experiences from working with HRI into the community and spread empathy and knowledge and hope. Collectively, HRI's work impacts our community, makes it better, and elevates us all. Hello, I am Sylvia Khan, and I am reading two short Urdu poems to you today, uh, both by a very contemporary feminist poet, Ishrat Afreen, based out of Pakistan, but she now resides in Houston. So the first poem, first in Urdu and then in English translation. The title is Intisab. Mera qad mere baap se uncha nikla aur meri maa jeet gayi. Mera qad mere baap se uncha nikla और मेरी माँ जीत गई बाय इशरत आफरीन डेडिकेशन आई ग्रू टॉलर दैट माई फादर एंड माई मदर वन आई ग्रू टॉलर दैन माई फादर एंड माई मदर वन बाय इशरत आफरीन द सेकेंड इज अ गजल बाय इशरत And I will first read it in English. Sorry, first read it in Urdu and then in English. लड़कियाँ माँ जैसे मुकद्दर क्यों रखती हैं? तन सहरा और आँख समंदर क्यों रखती हैं? औरतें अपने दुख के वारिस किसको देंगी? संदूकों में बंद ये ज़ेवर क्यों रखती हैं? वो जो आप ही पूजी जाने के लायक थी चंपा सी पूरों में पत्थर क्यों रखती हैं वो जो रही हैं खाली पेट और नंगे पाँव बचा बचा कर चादर क्यों रखती हैं वो जो रही हैं खाली पेट और नंगे पाँव बचा बचा के सर की चादर क्यों रखती हैं बंद हवेली में जो साने है हो जाते हैं उनकी खबर दीवारें अक्सर क्यों रखती हैं बंद हवेली में जो सान है हो जाते हैं उनकी खबर दीवारें अक्सर क्यों रखती हैं सुबह वसाल की किरणें हमसे पूछ रही हैं रातें अपने हाथ में खंजर क्यों रखती हैं सुबह वसाल की किरणें हमसे पूछ रही हैं रातें अपने हाथ में खंजर क्यों रखती हैं द ट्रांसलेशन Why do girls follow the destinies of their mothers? Why are their bodies deserts, their eyes ocean deep? Why do women keep their jewels locked in trunks 
to whom will they bequeath their legacy of grief? Those who are themselves worthy of worship, why do they clutch stones between jasmine fingertips? Those who remained hungry and barefooted, why do they never let their jothers slip? Those who remained hungry and barefooted, why do they never let their jothers slip? When tragedy strikes behind closed doors, why is it only the walls that often know? When tragedy strikes behind closed doors, why is it only the walls that often know? Shining upon our union, ask the rays of the morning sun, why are the knights armed with daggers when they come? Shining upon our union, ask the rays of the morning sun, why are the knights armed with daggers when they come? By Ishrat Afri. Home is like a place where you feel safe, a place where you can be your own, uh, a place where you're not going to get judged. When I met her, I thought about women as warriors, women as, as the part of the family who is the warrior that we don't get the credit for. And I think it was bringing me back to my family ties, to um, the people in my family and where my grandmother comes from. I was thinking about my sisters, my daughter, my grandmother, my mother. I was thinking about that, that she was a warrior and she carries all of that, all of those abstract shapes are kind of like a symbol of her plight, of, of the, the trials that she's been through, of the experiences that she's had to go through. And she carries them all with dignity and honor on her head. And it's very complex. I like the idea of it being complex too, because it's not an easy story. It's not such a simple, she's not a simple person. And so I think it's important to kind of think about it that way. And I wanted to express that through my painting. I just feel really honored to participate and to be able to to make a work about it. And hopefully other people will acknowledge the strength within her, but also just the strength within all of the, the people who come to our country because they add to our country and not necessarily take away from. To me, everybody's the same. Every human being has the same color blood. Every human being has a face, everybody has eyes, everybody has nose, everybody has everything. Everybody's the same. I just want her to be strong in everything that she does. I want her to see me as a strong example. And yeah, I just want to show her that it's better to be unique than to just follow everybody else. But at the same time, I want her to be kind. I want her to play with every little kid, like how it's supposed to be. Mexico, but American dreaming. 
Here illegal to be legal with some white paperwork to be denounced, unfreed by our America. I was born with trauma, raised with trauma, half body choked down with food and alcohol. Whatever it was, we consumed self-hatred, not white enough to be loved. Fue una time, esta time, una vez, cuando era niña pequeña. I was told I couldn't be with my abuelos anymore porque my English needed to be cleaner. I was six, only six, maybe five, but that memory holds me forever. My first lesson in racism and bigotry was passed down de mi familia con protection. I come from a place. Let's go to where the nomads lived. The sun, the moon, the wind amid, 
the seasonlessness of the stars, where no man dared to go too far. But we will go to where the hills have challenged independent will, unite our faiths inside ruins, revive the shrines where hope ran thin. Then onward to the mountain's edge, as solitary as knowledge. And if we fall, prepared to die, then brave, we'll spread our wings and fly. I am an immigrant from Mexico, and I am also a volunteer for the Human Rights Initiative of North Texas. Human rights is an essential component to what it means to be human. I support all immigrants and refugees to exercise their inherent human right to achieve life, liberty, freedom, work, and education. I support the work HRI does because it helps people to have access to their human rights. Si se puede. The Mousetrap by Paulo Coelho. Very worried, the mouse saw that the farmer had bought a mousetrap. He was out to kill him. He began to warn all the other animals. Careful with the mousetrap! Careful with the mousetrap! The hen, hearing his shouts, asked him to be quiet. My dear mouse, I know that this is a problem for you, but it's not going to have the least effect on me, so stop making such a fuss. The mouse went to talk to the pig, which was annoyed because his nap had been interrupted. There is a mousetrap in the house! I appreciate your concern, and I sympathize with you, answered the pig. So rest assured you will be in my prayers tonight, but that's the most I can do. Lonelier than ever, the mouse went to the cow for help. <laughs> my dear mouse, what's that got to do with me? Have you ever seen a cow killed in the mouse trap? <laughs> Seeing that no one was offering any solidarity, the mouse returned to the farmer's house, hid in his hole, and spent the whole night wide awake, afraid that some tragedy was about to happen. During the early hours of the night, he heard a noise. The mouse trap had caught something. The farmer's wife went downstairs to see if the mouse had been killed. In the dark, she did not notice that the trap had only caught the tail of a poisonous snake. When she drew near, she was bitten. The farmer, hearing his wife screaming, woke up and raced her to the hospital. She was given the proper treatment and then sent home. But she still had a fever. Knowing that there is no better remedy for the sick than a good broth, the farmer killed the hen. His wife started to recover. And as the couple was much loved in the region, all the neighbors came to visit them. And grateful for such a show of affection, the farmer killed the pig to serve his friends a hearty meal. His wife finally recovered. But the treatment was so very expensive. So the farmer sent the cow to the slaughterhouse and used the money from the meat to pay for all the medical bills. The mouse saw all of this and thought to himself, I warned them well. Wouldn't it have been better if the hen, the pig, and the cow had understood that one's problem puts everyone else in danger? Cada vez que se cruza una frontera. Qué lejos estoy del suelo donde he nacido. Inmensa nostalgia invade mi pensamiento. 
Y al verme tan sola y triste cual hoja al viento, quisiera llorar, quisiera morir de sentimiento. Así se escuchan millones de voces, los corazones mexicanos, los corazones muchos de otras tierras, y así también canto yo. Pero mi abuela, esa que nunca conocí que tenía raíces de muchas tierras como yo, decía que nuestro destino es andar, movernos, ir a donde nos lleve el viento, más allá incluso de la nostalgia y la tristeza. La gente se ha trasladado por todo el mundo por siempre, decía, para eso tenemos pies, para andar por ahí, por gusto, con curiosidad o necesidad, decía, la gente va y viene. Por eso hay gente de todos los colores, por todos lados. Yo digo que puedes moverte de muchas formas, puedes brincar, correr, dar vueltas. Solo hay que dejar a los pies seguirse el uno al otro, a los sueños inspirarles y al corazón guiarles un paso honesto y digno. Yo digo que como los pájaros, uno pega el vuelo a donde nos invita el destino, que como los caracoles cargamos nuestra casa, pero hay que llevarla en el corazón, no en el lomo para que no nos pese. También hay que cargar a la memoria para que nos ayude a recordar quiénes somos. Pero algunos no van, mija, decía la abuela. A algunos los sacan de sus tierras, de sus familias, Puede ser un huracán, una sequía, una helada, un fuego, un desastre grande, un desastre de esos creados por los hombres. Como sea, cada vez que se cruza una frontera es un milagro.
our human rights. Human rights are human rights. Hi, my name is Chris Muse. I'm a family law attorney here in Dallas, Texas, shareholder and partner at the law firm of Coons Fuller. I've had the privilege to work alongside the folks at Human Rights Initiative who provide life-changing resources to those they help. I began volunteering with HRI in the summer of 2018 as a pro bono lawyer uh, helping out with unaccompanied minor cases. I've also worked with other organizations with asylum seekers and after hearing the stories of those that I've assisted those persecuted in their home countries, I quickly learned that these people seeking shelter and aid are truly the best of us. It's been said before, but I come back to it often. You know, who wouldn't want as their neighbor, the mother or the father uh, who risked it all so that their family could have a better life in this country? Now, unfortunately, not all share that idea. And even more unfortunately, those writing and enforcing the rules in this country don't share that idea. And that's why it's even more important right now to support HRI. Because HRI provides vital services to an underserved community. Not only do they provide direct legal services for asylum seekers, those fleeing human trafficking or immigrant children, but they also provide essential social services too. And so that once those folks are, are in the middle of or beyond their legal process that they actually have a foundation that they can build a, a happy and successful life on in this country. Now, the United States idealizes itself as a beacon of freedom for the world, but we can't be that light unless we welcome those in the world that are the most in need. And our current immigration policies are actively denying our ability to live up to that standard, to that goal for ourselves of freedom for all. And because we are a nation of immigrants, built mostly and in part by immigrants, we need to support organizations like HRI. Uh, they are an inspiration as they continue to put their shoulder to the wheel of justice. And I encourage that you volunteer and support HRI. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Greg Metz. I am uh, the director of the Spain Gallery at the University of Texas at Dallas. And my good friend, Mariam Begg, has asked me to say a few words about the artists and the artworks being offered in this year's fabulous annual HRI's Art Grab. So uh, full disclosure, first I'd like to say that in general, I have an aversion to artists giving their works away in auctions and for a variety of reasons. However, that said, uh, I believe that this is one auction that defies my criteria on this front, and especially uh, the amazing artists on this list, as they are first and foremost gifted humanitarians who have personally, uh, has have personally experienced, witnessed, uh, and understand the hardships endured and associated with making uh, cultural and societal transitions from one dynamic situation to another, which uh, is evidenced both in uh, the power of their works and their also their personal uh, actions. So uh, knowing this lineup as I do, these proven artists and their works, which I would consider worthy investments, uh, not only for the execution of their craft, but um, for the heartbeat of uh, the shared experiences uh, spliced in into the works via their personal narratives, their imaginative, uh, magical interpretations, uh, their poetic compilations uh, between beauty and hardship, um, and reflections of memorable yet uh, very challenging times. Uh, these all can be passed on to, uh, to others as reminders of uh, their new owner's contributions uh, 
in supporting HRI uh, and its dedicated mission to offer relief and hope. Uh, in other words, in otherwise uh, very daunting crisis situations. So a little bit about the artist. Uh, most of these artists are professionally known commodities uh, with collectible credentials. And I have curated as many as 15 of these artists into exhibitions over the years. Uh, collectors will all tell you that the first and foremost uh, criteria in their collecting it usually uh, comes from the heart. That is investing in uh, in the works which speak to them, that they find inspiration in, uh, whether it's aesthetically appealing, uh, the narrative or the artist story, or just niche works that they relate to. And I, I know this because I've done many, many seminars with collectors, critics, gallerists, and artists, uh, on the valuing and collecting of uh, works of art. So I hope that those who uh, win these works will uh, also get to learn and know uh, these artists as they all have very impacting stories and have contributed in so many diverse ways to the uh, North Texas art scene and, and beyond. These artists are not just artists, but they are for the most part, dedicated advocates of cultural and humanitarian enlightenment. Uh, I consider them multidimensional influencers. Uh, their circles are wide. Uh, so yes, these beautiful, inspirational uh, people and their works, I believe, really emphasize uh, the expressed uh, point of points of light uh, championed by HRI. So thank you all for contributing as well to uh, a very important and necessary cause. So enjoy the artwork and the artists. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christine Cruz. I'm the legal program director at Mosaic Family Services. And we support Human Rights Initiative because we share one mission. We believe that immigrant rights are human rights and that everyone has the right to live free from persecution from their government and have a safe place to live. Hi, my name is Griselda and I'm a huge supporter of the Human Rights Initiative of North Texas. This amazing organization provides free legal services and aid to vulnerable immigrants and refugees here in the United States. It's important to protect these vulnerable individuals because all they are trying to do is seek a better life for themselves and their family. They are usually escaping wars, gangs, poverty, violence back from in their home country. And they come to the United States in search of a safe haven. These individuals deserve a voice and the Human Rights Initiative of North Texas gives them that. I hope to be one of these fighters for these individuals one day. Every one of us has the duty to stand up to injustice. HRI is a vehicle for justice for those who have suffered human rights abuses. Whether it be for those seeking asylum, victims of violent offenses, or children who have been abused, abandoned, or neglected, HRI's legal and social services offer an avenue of relief, and that's why I support HRI. If it's um, Yalem Shu, Yilea Yalinji Yawatatu Manged. Nyam lijoch nebarn kagar sin sedded. Rak shibbin yal nmanichanako. Rasa no maselling baharia quaratno. Katamau bik a yer elem magarishno. Look and tell a yitan kabeta sabachin. Let us fa what tenal inyam kagarachin. Menem bikabdenem yezamed nafkotu. Menem bias chagren nurunabl hatu. Lefat de Kamachin Alkaram Bakantu Lanchim and Dezihu Tratchenaito 
በሩን ይክፈትልሽ መንገዱን አብርቶ ይሳካ መንገድሽ ይፈጸም ህልምሽ እኛን የረዳምላክ ክርስቶስ ይምራሽ Hi, I'm Will Evans, the founder and director of Deep Vellum Publishing. I support the Human Rights Initiative because I believe that the story of immigrants in America is the story of America itself. My forefathers were immigrants to this country over 200 years ago, and Human Rights Initiative supports the rights of immigrants to this country today to give them a voice, to allow them to pursue the same American dream that my own forefathers did those hundreds of years ago. I will continue to support the Human Rights Initiative no matter what administration is in office because it is vital to have a voice, a voice in this system, a voice for those who are fleeing persecution from around the world, a voice for those who wish to come and contribute to the American cause, the story of America, the story of immigrants in this country, the story of those who come together in pursuit of a common goal, of a common good. I believe in the Human Rights Initiative. I believe in the rights of immigrants. I believe in human rights for all. I believe that I am descended from immigrants to America, and I believe that future descendants of American immigrants will continue to change this country for the better. Thank you. सुना है जंगलों का भी कोई दस्तूर होता है सुना है शेर का जब पेट भर जाए तो वो हमला नहीं करता दरख्तों की घनी छाऊ में जाकर लेट जाता है हवा के तेज झोंके जब दरख्तों को हिलाते हैं तो मैना अपने बच्चे भूलकर कव्वे के अंडों को परों से थाम लेती है सुना है घोंसले से कोई बच्चा गिर पड़े तो सारा जंगल जाग जाता है सुना है जंगलों का भी कोई दस्तूर होता है सुना है जब किसी नदी के पानी में बए के घोंसले का गंदुमी साया लरसता है तो नदी की रुपहली मछलियाँ उसको पड़ोसी मान लेती हैं कोई पुल टूट जाए तो कहीं तूफान आ जाए किसी लकड़ी के तख्ते पर गिलहरी सांप बकरी और चीता साथ होते हैं सुना है जंगलों का भी कोई दस्तूर होता है खुदावंदा जलीलो मोतबर 
دانا و بینا منصف و اکبر میرے اس شہر میں اب جنگلوں ہی کھا کوئی دستور نافذ کر کوئی قانون نافذ کر سنا ہے جنگلوں کا بھی کوئی دستور ہوتا ہے Nobody hurt you I'll stay 